Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's such an exciting, historic day today here in the City of Champions, Brockton, Massachusetts, to have the senior senator from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, joining us here today. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> senator Ed Markey, whose mother is a Sullivan, so thank you, Senator, for being here today. And of course, our wonderful Congressman Stephen Lynch for being here as well. Um, I'm Robert Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton, and I welcome you here to the People's Building known as City Hall. It's the most beautiful City Hall in the Commonwealth. The artwork alone speaks volumes. It's just absolutely beautiful. So we're in the Great Hall today. I know we have a lot of City Councilors here today. I want to thank you all, Councilors, for what you do each and every day. Uh, Council President Suna Castro is here as well. We have our State Delegation. We have Senator Mike Brady. We have uh, Rep. Dubois, Rep. Cassidy, the newest Rep. Rita Mendez. Thank you for being here today. We have our Plymouth County officials as well. I want to thank you here today. I know if I start reciting names, I'm going to forget somebody, and I do not want to do that. There's a lot of county uh, assistance on a daily basis, so thank you from the county. But today is, as I said, a historic day. Uh, as a guy that grew up in the city of Brockton, I can never remember having the two U.S. Senators and the Congressman in the same room at the same time. So this is awesome. <laughs> So I, I do want to thank the delegation, the federal delegation, what they do each and every day, even though they are based in Washington, D.C. They never forget about the city of Brockton, Plymouth County, the Commonwealth, but what they do for the nation is just awestruck. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We are here today. We are here today to celebrate. Today is a celebration. Today is a day uh, like no other. We are the recipients, thanks to the efforts of these three unbelievable public servants, that was signed off by President Biden, of $5 million from the Omnibus Appropriations Bill to the city. $5 million directly to the city of Brockton. That's a game changer. Now you may say, you may say, you know, what, what are we going to do with that $5 million? There's two projects we're doing. Uh, number one is the East Side Pool, the Cosgrove Pool, and that's a rendition uh, of what we're going to be doing over there. It's a game changer. Last April, I flew down to Washington, D.C., and I met with Congressman Lynch, and I met with Senator, Senator Markey, and I expressed how, for many Brocktonians, the East Side Pool is actually the beach. It's the beach. And, uh, and, and as a son of Salty and a son of Malden, they both concurred with that idea. I know that Senator Markey, growing up in Malden, used to go to the uh, municipal pool over in Stoneham. So he understood the urgency of this. So this is a $3 million game changer on the east side of the city of Brockton. So I want to thank you. But before, before I talk about uh, some of the other endeavors we're doing, we have to also thank the federal delegation for what they did for the city of Brockton during COVID. The CARES Act was a game changer. We received $19 million thanks to uh, the federal delegation. Uh, the money was given to Plymouth County. The officials worked with us. $19 million. That was a lot of money, but we spent it in a wise way. We spent it in a way to help our students. $4 million so that every single kid in the city of Brockton could have a laptop. A laptop. One to one. Never thought it would happen. It would not have happened without these three individuals right here. We also used it to save lives in the city of Brockton. And then the influx of the ARPA money, the American Rescue Plan. Congressman Lynch came here not too long ago with a wonderful uh, $34 million appropriation on behalf of the delegation. And we said, let's get that money, let's put it in the bank account, let's get it to work. And I can tell you right now, we have, we've already got it to work. $2 million was already given to 43 different organizations here in the city of Brockton. Average of $50,000. It runs the gamut from our Cape Verdean Association and Haitian Community Partners. It just runs the gamut. So that was $2 million. But then this building here, built in the late 1800s by dedicated immigrants that came here to the city of Brockton for a change, it's never had a dime really spent on it. So we're going to spend millions of dollars to make sure that this building is going to be a showpiece for generations to come. But then we can never forget about our veterans. So the War Memorial on West Elm Street is going to have a millions and millions of dollars renovated into it as well. And then our Senior Center, our Council on Aging, is going to have a massive square footage renovation because of the ARPA money. So we need to continue to use that money in a wise, wise mean. The $34 million we already have, right, we're already dedicating it. Every playground in the city of Brockton is going to be touched by that money. We have seven wards in the city of Brockton. We have to take care of the kids, right? But we also have another 17.5 of the opera money that the county is holding right now on behalf of us, and we'll be getting that money. So we're putting this money to work, but we wouldn't be talking about this money without the dedicated efforts of these public servants. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Another thing that I have to address is all of us grew up with the, uh, the, the, the idea of a roof over our heads. And right now we're seeing a lot of homeless folks in the city of Brock and the homeless population. They don't choose to be on the streets. There's, uh, there's really variable reasons why they're there. Drugs and alcohol and mental health. Maybe they lost a house in the foreclosure epidemic. I don't know. But they're my residents in the city of Brockton. We have to take care of them. We're using some opera money right now, partnering with Father Bill's Mainspring. They're going to be leaving downtown. They're going to some government land that abuts the VA hospital. It's going to be a campus wraparound over there. It's a game changer for the city of Brockton. We would not be able to do that without these three individuals here as well. So again, we all know Brockton, when you look at our financial le ledger, right, we're not wealthy. We're not wealthy when we look at the numbers. We're wealthy with people, right? And everybody in this room understands that. You know, this city was built upon people coming here for a, for a, for a chance, just an opportunity. My own grandparents came from Ireland, Valley Harness, and Waterford. They came here to work in the shoe factories. We have so many different waves of people coming here. Wonderful Cape Verdean population, Haitian, Angolan, Nigerian, Latinx communities. That's because Brockton has always been welcoming, exclusive, and it's a special place to live, but it's also a special place to have a business. So when we get this federal money, I would be short-sighted as a lifelong Brocktonian and mayor not to make sure that everybody is touched by this money. But again, we wouldn't have the money without these three people. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, when we talk about the rich getting richer, that's always the, the, uh, the idea, right? Rich getting richer. Today, the city of Brockton, not a wealthy community, we hit the jackpot. We have $3 million we're going to invest in there. And then I, I've already set aside another $2 million to make sure that $5 million is put into that, to that wonderful pool. It's going to be a complete, complete revision and a repurpose of that building. It hasn't been touched since it was built in the late 60s. So we're going to have a splash park for the kids. We're going to have a state-of-the-art shower and changing room for the kids. The pool's going to be completely new. So it's an awesome, awesome endeavor. And again, we wouldn't have it without the, friend, the friends in, in Washington, D.C. So um, I, it's a personal thing to me. Listen, my dad was a teacher at Brockton High. My mom was a nurse here in the city of Brockton. We didn't have any money growing up. I lived in Ward 2, right? I flipped burgers through Boston College. People said, you went to BC. Yeah, I flipped burgers. I burnt my fingers on the fryer later. But I did it because that's what my mom and dad taught me to do. But you know what I did in the late 1880s, 1980s? I was a lifeguard at that pool. So I know the kids in Crescent Court that live in the, quote, projects. It's not a project. It's a place of housing, Brockton Housing Authority run. But that's where they go. So we can spend this money for the next generation. And as public servants, federal, state, local, that's our charge. That's our duty. So I am just so thankful to be here today. The next, uh, the next money, $2 million, it's not, as, uh, it's not as fun to talk about. It's uh, solid waste. It's, uh, it's bio waste. All right? But at the end of the day, we have to talk about it. Because we're seeing a renaissance right now here in the city of Brockton because of our three commuter stops, right? Transit-oriented development. Todd, Todd, Todd. That's what they're talking about. I was asked to speak with Dan Rivera last week in, in, in Providence, Rhode Island. What are you doing in Brockton? How are you doing it? What's the, the magic sauce? What's the secret formula? It's about working together. It's about collaboration. So we're able to harness the uh, intellectual capacity. We're able to use the money. But the goal, the eyes on the prize is a better Brockton for all. Better together. So that $2 million we're going to use for... Uh, for planning, research, analyzing, designing our biosolids technology. We have to do it because right now we have 750 housing units in the queue downtown. Another 450 built downtown, but we're expanding, right? We have seven wards, 28 precincts. We have to keep moving around the city of Champions, but we have to make sure we're making uh, every effort from a financial to make sure the future growth meets the future needs of the biosolids. And so again, it's not a sexy conversation, it's a needed conversation. $2 million is truly going to help us. But let me make it clear right now to each and every one of you. As mayor of the city of Brockton, I will never, never allow an incinerator in Ward 4. Never, never. It's not going to happen. So when we're talking about the biosolids technology, it does not include and never will include under a solid administration any type of incineration. It just won't happen. I want to make that clear to everybody here. Um, the last thing I want to say is that um, it's not just the $5 million that our delegation has gone to bat for. There's a lot of organizations here, and I see a lot of them in the room, that also were recipients of that, uh, the Omnibus. And I want to read it um, because everybody needs to know that Brockton is the city, right? The business known as the city of Brockton, the people business, received $5 million. But also, um, we got $2 million to the YMCA for a pilot program to increase access to family engagement and educational services. Another $2 million to NeighborWorks Housing Solutions for 1200 Montello, which is, again, a Todd project, 
right? It's up in Camp Pella. It's in the Council President's Ward, Ward 4. million bucks is going over to Brockton Hospital Signature Health Care. Efforts to expand behavioral health, mental health. It's heightened by the pandemic. They're addressing it with a million dollars, thanks to our federal delegation. 337000 for uh, family and community resources. I see Pat here to increase capacity, again, at their mental health clinic. A million dollars to our friend Sue Joss over at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center to convert administrative offices into clinical space to accommodate six primary care providers and also increase substance use disorder services, totaling 11.3 million bucks. 11 point, let me say it one more time, maybe you can clap. 11.3 million dollars! So, I, uh, I married a, a I married Maria Francesca Luisi, right? So she's a fine Italian, and she says, hey, Bob, you Irish talk too much. So I'm gonna leave it at this. We are just so proud of the City of Champions. We will continue to, uh, to work with all elected officials for the common purpose of a better Brockton. Um, but what we always have to do when we welcome people into our home, and this is the home of the City of Champions, we give gifts, right, party favors. So every uh, delegation member today Senator Warren, Senator Markey, Congressman Lynch will receive a, a boxer sweatshirt, right? Red and black, I right? Boxer pride. They're also, uh, they're also going to receive a citation uh, from me as the mayor. But it's for me as the mayor, but it's a collective citation from all of us here and every resident in the city of Brockton and every business are just thanking you all. And, and last but not least, there's a book in there for each and every one of you, the Strand Fire Book. The anniversary is coming up, March 10th, 1941. We lost to Brave 13. And before 9-11, it was the greatest loss of firefighters in our nation's history. So we will never forget the Brave 13. We also illustrated how brave our men and women that protect and serve illustrated a 10 alarm fire at the Brockton Hospital recently. Thank God for each and every one that serves us. But today, I am just here to say thank you very much, Senator Warren. Thank you very much, Senator Markey. Thank you, Congressman Lynch. And now I'm going to turn it over to the senior senator from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren. Thank you. You know, it is great to be back in the city of champions. Uh, it's great to be back with Senator Markey, with Congressman Lynch, with our state delegation, with our local officials. Uh, I know that your city has gone through a really tough time recently after the fire at Brockton Hospital. But in the fighting spirit of the city of champions, this community immediately rallied to ensure that the residents of Brockton have access to the critical health services they need and that they deserve. The city's first responders, the firefighters, the state agencies and legislatures, the nonprofit organizations, the federal agencies, everyone has jumped in to try to help. There is a whole lot of work ahead of us to ensure that the hospital can safely reopen, but it is this partnership that will get us through. I am with you all the way. I know that Ed and Steve are as well, because that is what we are here today to celebrate, partnership. Partnership with Brockton. <laughs> partnership with federal government and the city government and the state group and local community groups so that we can talk about the $11.3 million that is coming directly from the federal government to Brockton. And I just, I know that the mayor has laid out in some detail uh, about what this is gonna be, but I wanna describe it slightly differently to think about the areas that we're trying to make sure Brockton has the resources to be able to work on. You're working out there every day, but this is the extra help from the federal government. First, it's on mental health services. There are multiple grants in this $11.4 million that will go into mental health services to make sure that everyone in this community has access to the help that they need and has that access not three weeks from now, not after staying in a hallway for three days because there's no place for people to go, but has access to the help they need when they need it. The second 
thing that this money is about is about housing. And I met with the housing director on the way in this morning. I said, from us to you, make this happen. Uh, part of what this money is about is transforming an old tow lot uh, that evidently is not much help to anybody and making it ready so that you can actually build more housing, more affordable housing, more housing right here in Brockton. You need more housing. <laughs> the third area, the, the mayor describes it as solid waste. <clears throat> that was delicate. Um, I'm just going to take that to another one. It's about clean water. And it's about clean water for all of our people. Because this is something everyone deserves. Access to housing, access to health care, and access to clean water. <laughs> and the fourth truly is about our kids. And there it is. We're going to put money into a pool so all our kids, and even those who are now kind of old kids, can go and enjoy it every single day. Because Brockton is a place of families. And that's what we're investing in. So I just want to say to all of you, it is a real honor to be here. Man, this is the reason to run for the United States Senate, <laughs> is that you get to help make things happen. Good things happen in our community. Ed and Steve and I go to Washington, and we fight every day. We fight against people who think that the way government's supposed to work is it's supposed to work for the wealthy and the well-connected. We are in this fight to make our federal government, to make our state government, to make our local governments work for the people. And it is an honor to be in the city of champions, people who are going to make that happen. Thank you all. Oh my goodness. Whenever I need a pick-me-up, I'm just coming to Brockton. Yeah. Okay, this, is, this is an incredible day for us. And uh, it's, uh, it's just so great to be with you, Mayor Sullivan. You know, my mother was a Sullivan. And my mother said the Sullivans are very superior people. So, um, so thank you. And to uh, Mike Brady, Michelle Dubois, Jerry Cassidy, Rita Mendez, City Council, School Committee, leaders up and down uh, <clears throat> this uh, incredible uh, community. Thank you all for everything that you do. Um, so, um, so we, you pride yourself on your teams, on the champions you produce. So, um, so Senator Warren and I and Steve Lynch, we try to be a good team, a good team for Brockton. Uh, every single day. You tell us what you want, and Elizabeth and I on the Senate side, we'll try to figure out how to get it for you. And it can be a swimming pool, it can be housing, it can be mental health, no matter what it is. We're going to try to get it for you, if it's humanly possible. Uh, and we did that through the uh, rescue plan, getting you tens of millions of additional dollars uh, through these individual programs that we're talking about right now. Um, it's absolutely critical. Uh, that this great city get the assistance which it needs in order to help its people. So um, I thank you so much for everything that you do on an ongoing uh, basis. Um, our, gr our deep gratitude um, goes to the extraordinary efforts of the first responders who came to the rescue in response to the 10 alarm fire at Brockton Hospital just a few weeks ago. Thank you, first responders. Thank you for what you did. Um, unprecedented fire. And uh, the, the police and fire departments, the fire departments from surrounding communities, the medical staff from Brockton Hospital, Good Samaritan Hospital, and emergency medical services who worked to safely evacuate and care for patients. Uh, the efforts on that day and in the weeks to come are nothing short of heroic. And many know of, the, of, of Rocky Marciano, but Marvin Hagler is also from Brockton. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. 
uh, the middleweight champion, tenacious southpaw from Brockton, who Mike Tyson called one of the best warriors of all time. And what Marvelous once said was, a champion knows and shows who they are by what, by what they do when they are tested. When a person gets up and says, I can still do it, then they are a champion. Today, Brocktonians are being tested, and they are not staying down. They are getting up, and they're yelling from the rooftops, yes, we can. Yes, we can. We will do it. Uh, we will respond to these challenges. And again, you have great leaders, um, and I'm honored to be partnered with the extraordinary leaders in our delegation, Senator Warren. There's no champion like her every single day fighting for working people. And, uh, and uh, I think if Steve could and the House rules allowed it, he would still wear his work boots on the floor of the United States House of Representatives. That's who they are every single day. This money for the pool, absolutely critical, $3 million. Uh, you were a lifeguard, Mr. Mayor. Plus, that is incredible. I had one save, too, Senator. He had one save, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and it could have been me because, uh, because you know, my father drove a truck for the Hood and Oak Company, and we didn't have a car. So I learned how to swim at the Stoneham Pool one mile from my house. Um, we didn't have a beach house in New Hampshire. We didn't have a beach house on the Cape. The pool was our beach, okay? So uh, I know how important this is for, um, for blue collar, poor kids to have a place to go. Uh, and it is just as important to them in their memories when they'll be looking back as the nicest beach house on Cape Cod, on Nantucket, on Martha's Vineyard is to those kids. Uh, and that's why this is so important. And I know that two years ago, Brockton lost two children, um, Tiago uh, Depina and Rafael uh, Adrade, who tragically drowned at Lake Waldo after falling in during a family visit uh, to D.W. Fields Park. Uh, we can't forget that unimaginable loss. This pool gives, a, gives every child a place to go, to learn how to swim. You know, they won't have to go to situations uh, that are dangerous for them. So for us, um, this is why we serve, as Senator Warren said. Uh, it is to help those who are most in need, who don't have quite the same resources as the um, uh, as the uh, as wealthier communities may have, uh, the accents may be different, but the aspirations are the same for these families and for these children, as any other community in Massachusetts. Uh, and that's our goal. Uh, it is to provide those resources for you to be able to get the job done. Uh, I'm not going to go through the the litany. Uh, the mayor did it better than any mayor has ever done it in any event I've ever been at. Uh, Wait, to, can you say that one more time? To to to. Uh, to uh, <laughs> to acknowledge these, but um, one in three patients um, were awaiting behavioral health evaluations or inpatient care in the emergency department at the hospital. Um, we have to make sure that we give the help to the hospital, to the city, so they can get back on their feet 100% to serve this community. So we're going to do that. Uh, I can't thank you enough for uh, giving us this honor to uh, be here with you today, and whenever you, um, uh, whenever you uh, ask, we will respond. I'm coming down in April. Again, <laughs> Whatever Brockton needs, we will try to provide for you. So um, I, uh, I can't thank you enough, and and I also say on this first anniversary uh, of Russia's invasion uh, of Ukraine, we remember all of our. Uh, young men and women who are working to help the Ukrainians, uh, and we will stand with the Ukrainian people. We will not allow Russia to uh, in any way undermine a democracy uh, standing for the freedom of all of the, their people. And with that, I just want to uh, say what an honor it is for me to partner with uh, Senator Warren in the um, Senate, but to partner with uh, 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 Steve Lynch, a, 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 a warrior for of working men and women in our state. Uh, I give you Congressman C. Lynch.
All right. Uh, thank you, Ed, for your, your, your kind introduction. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth Bourne. Uh, you know, I have a much easier time, uh, especially during the funding <laughs> rounds uh, that we're talking about here today. Uh, at that time, we had the majority in the House, but uh, it was a very precarious balance in the Senate. So uh, I just want to give great credit to, to my friends and colleagues, Senator Elizabeth Warren and, and Ed Markey, for the valiant fight that they put up to make sure that any resources that we put in on the House side uh, were protected and in some cases increased uh, when the bill went over to the Senate. So. Uh, it really is, as, as Senator Warren indicated, this is really about partnership. It's not only partnership in, Was in Washington, D.C., but uh, every team needs a quarterback. And, and when it comes to Brockton, uh, you know, Mayor Bob Sullivan, he's our quarterback. <laughs> the, the way this funding works is... Uh, we, ha we have renewed the idea of earmarks, which somehow in the past has, have received, uh, you know, a certain taint or, or unfavorability. But to be honest with you, the way we did this was uh, we went to our mayors. And in this case, uh, when the money became available for earmarks, uh, I sat down with, uh, with Mayor Sullivan and, uh, you know, we went through with his staff as well. What, what are the projects that you would identify uh, that would be priority projects for the city of Brockton. Things that you would not otherwise be able to do because of complexity or perhaps because of, of the amount of money that's, that's necessary. And uh, not only conversations with, with Bob Sullivan, but also with, with Mike Brady, with Michelle Dubois, with uh, Rita Mendez, with, uh, with Jerry Cassidy, to make sure that we're all on the same page and that we're, we're all working together in the best interest of Brockton. So that's how, that's how a team works, and, and uh, I'm blessed to have the delegation and, and Susan Castro and the entire city council here in Brockton. We're very lucky to have a delegation that there's no, there's no daylight between us. We're, we're all in together, and it just, it, you know, it, it makes it feel like coming home when I, when I come to Brockton uh, because of the, the friendships, the relationships that we have here. And, and you know, I, I think I have a tendency to... to to measure a city uh, on, on three uh, criteria. How, how, do they, how do they take care of their kids? And, and as others have said, this Cosgrove pool is all about the kids, right? Uh, we know the tragedies that have occurred. We know that during the, the, the peak heat waves last summer, this, this pool was closed and kids had to go to less safe areas uh, to, to enjoy themselves. Uh, we think about the other criteria how does a city regard its senior citizens and, and take care of them? And, you know, we see across the, the city of Brockton the wonderful uh, benefits and, and care and respect that the senior citizens in this community receive. And then we look at how, how, do, how do people regard their veterans, those sons and daughters of Brockton who were put on the uniform on behalf of our country. You know, I just had a chance to travel to Ukraine and to Romania and, and uh, Moldova and, uh, and Poland uh, to the borders of, of Ukraine. And we have sons and daughters uh, from Brockton who are serving in the military today, graduates of Brockton High School, so Brockton to the core, and who are doing it. <laughs> carrying on a great tradition in, in our country, but also to a degree of excellence that, that has never been surpassed. So. We're extremely proud of them as well. Uh, I'm grateful to work with, with such committed partners at, at both the local and state levels, uh, all dedicated in their desire and ability to do all they can and to work together to get the necessary funding to make Brockton safer for its residents. Uh, I do want to call out just a couple of people who have not, well, they've been mentioned, but uh, I don't think fully. First of all, we have a treasurer in, in Plymouth County who does things differently. He's very much hands-on. He's a former colleague of mine in the House of Representatives at the State House. Uh, but our Plymouth County Treasurer, Tom O'Brien, is, is a great partner for the city of Rockford. And, and one other person who has been mentioned, but not fully enough, and that is Sue Joss. Sue Joss runs the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. 
And so I, I've represented Brockton for 20 years, and uh, I've seen how Sue has uh, lifted up, and, and she's got an empire going on now down there. And I remember going through with Mayor Jack Units when we were going through the waiting room and climbing over families that were waiting to be seen. Now uh, that's all changed, and, and uh, we're not announcing it today, but we're going to cut the ribbon on a new pharmacy uh, down inside uh, Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. And one of the other projects that we all worked together on, Ed and, and Elizabeth and I, uh, gave another million dollars to, to Brockton Neighborhood uh, Health Center. So uh, we're going to celebrate that a little bit later. But, uh, uh, and and it's, it's really, you know, when I, when I think about what they're doing at Brockton Neighborhood uh, Health Center, they're doing God's work. They're caring for those in our community that uh, need that help the most. And uh, Brockton was impacted more severely by COVID than, than many other cities in the country. And so uh, we've, we've had to rely on Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, but also Brockton Hospital, Good Samaritan Hospital as well, uh, to, to pick up the slack as well. But getting the necessary funding for, for these projects uh, required a strong partnership between all of our officers, all of our staff. And, and I, I want to also thank uh, Sydney Marrow, who's uh, the chief of staff. I know she's probably in the back. But, uh, she was really the, the, the driving force, I think, uh, among many, with, uh, with the efforts on the Cosgrove Pool. So I want to thank for her, her great service. Uh, behind the scenes up, up until now. Uh, the amenities are well outdated at, at that pool, and uh, unfortunately they don't abide by the current safety standards. The bathhouse is not ADA compliant, so we've got to step up on that and make sure that uh, handicapped persons can enjoy the pool as well. And uh, uh, three million of this community project funding will allow Brockton to make these essential updates to the pool so all residents can continue to use and enjoy it. The other project, and it's been mentioned, uh, you know, the biosolids uh, project. Just so you know, uh, because of the current situation, Brockton gets charged quite a bit for using alternative sewage systems, and they charge you for that. So with this new money that we're putting in place, we're going to save about $1.5 million a year for the next 25 years in the city of Brockton. I talked about how we distribute this, uh, this, this money and the resources, but I, I do want to say how proud I am. Brockton's got a, such a great history. And, you know, I'm a former iron worker. I strapped on a pair of work boots for 20 years as an iron worker. And uh, there's just a, there's a grit and, and a, a strength in the people and the city of Brockton that, that you can't not love, right? Uh, and and it's, it's carried on in this tradition, um, I think, very ably by, by Mayor Bob Sullivan. He is a perfect reflection. He's a fighter. He is a fighter. And he's a wonderful reflection of your city. And uh, I just compliment the people of, of Brockton for your wisdom and your heart in, in choosing a leader like Bob Sullivan. Uh, to lead this city. He's the right man at the right time uh, for the right city. So thank you. So we've got, we've got good things going here in the city of Brockton. Uh, you know, and, I, and I'm, just, I'm just delighted uh, to be part of the Brockton delegation and to have one small part in the success of this city. So uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for inviting us. Thank you for the recognition. I want to thank our state delegation and, and our city council. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, it takes all of us. And, uh, and also the, the staff here at, at, at Brockton City Hall and the staff of our, our colleagues in city and state government, thank you so much for, for all you do for the, for the people of Brockton. This is a, you know, we all hope to live our lives in a meaningful cause. And I, I think those of us who serve the people of Brockton uh, do just that. We're, we're lucky to have the opportunity 
to serve such wonderful and deserving people. Uh, Brockton is a shining example, a shining example of what's best about America. And uh, I'm just struggling to meet your highest expectations each and every day. God bless you all and thank you. So uh, this, this concludes uh, the celebration here at City Hall, but I also want to let you know that the delegation will be joining us. Uh, as mayor, I also chair the Bad Bus Corporation, Brockton Area Transit, those wonderful buses that go all the way into Ashmont uh, that bring people to work. We're going to be jumping on a Bad Bus to do a quick trip over the east side. Uh, it's only like a three-minute drive over there to look at uh, the east side pool. So we're going to do a, a before visit, and then we're going to welcome them back for an after visit. But one thing I want to say, there's a lot of media here and a lot of people that are watching on TV. Uh, Brockton is here for you. We will welcome you with open arms if you want to live here, if you want to work here. And if you are a business, know that the City of Champions is open for business. God bless you. God bless our city and our nation. Thank you.